uh, coronavirus patients, so to say, uh, those affected with it. And the United Kingdom, too, is um, on a lockdown, some parts lockdown because of uh, another variant of it that's showing phase. And so in some other parts of Europe, uh, the, the coronavirus is taking its toll. The good news about it is that, uh, yes, we have a vaccine. Um, a vaccine has been discovered, and of course, it is taking it around the world now, and um, what this will do. But coming back home, we still have people that just would not believe that coronavirus is real and is with us, and it's taking its toll on people that are recorded and being recorded on daily basis. And um, our situation in Nigeria could be on um, that uh, we're not getting reports, or is it under reporting? That we're getting um, and that's why we just do not know how this um, uh, 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 this disease is taking its toll on us but we do know that um, people are dying and of course um, the way we do our things here we do not have records data is not with us it's not our strong point and of course um, we're recording deaths with me on the program this morning I have Dr. Jim Ibrahim uh, of the Barrow Deco Teaching Hospital and uh, we'll be talking about what we have in the state. Kaduna State, uh, rising cases of coronavirus in Kaduna State. Um, on the graph, it's, it's going up and, and down, but it is a reality in Kaduna State that uh, coronavirus is going on, on, on the high. And so what we have to do. And because of that, we've also seen steps taken by government. Um, yes, we are on our own now. The government has said we are on our own, but we must be protected and we must stay safe and, and so the protocols have been brought and uh, we've been told that uh, we'll stay with the protocols uh, we're having a situation where yes I, I go around I see people the, the face masking team is, is, is people are you know really really going with the face mask and of course we do know that uh, uh, there is a task force that uh, is going around to see that people you know keep to uh, the protocols that have been kept in place but how this is um, how this is helping out is, is an issue. Doctor Jim Ibrahim, good morning and glad to have you. Yeah, good morning yes. and good morning, listeners. Yes, uh, let's, let's just um, the world over. We, you know, um, much as we have a vaccine, we're still saying that uh, we have in deaths recorded, and since it all started, four hundred thousand deaths in United States of America. Now that's that's on coronavirus. That's not a number you can. Uh, we, we of co of course do know what had happened with the Trump administration, and how much uh, it had not done. It had not helped on uh, the matters of coronavirus. But but, but that's recorded, and some people still stay safe, or w would be safe to say that coronavirus is not real. Yeah, thank you very much. I think what is happening in America is very very disturbing, and uh, it actually started uh, with the former president who was playing down the uh, the dangers uh, of COVID-19 amongst American people and uh, probably he was playing politics as we can also see Nigeria one or two of, of the, our governors uh, play down the things but uh, the reality is that uh, the thing is still ravaging is killing um, or killing people all over the world as of this morning we have over two million people that have died all over the world out of uh, over one, 101 infections all over the million 101 million people have been infected all over the world and america is an epicenter where about 26 million have been infected and uh, 439 people 439,000 people have died in america followed by india who where about 10.7 million people have been infected, over 153,000 have died, followed by Brazil. Then uh, coming to Africa, where we have South Africa as our happy center, about 1.4 million people have been infected in South Africa, and over 42,000 people have died. And in Nigeria today, we have uh, 126,000 people have been infected, and uh, 1,546. Three people have died. So, but uh, what I want people to know concerning Nigeria figure is 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 not figure that we can actually rely on because we 
we we so many cases are all reported because uh, of uh, our nature we are poor as seeking behavior in the country because of strong addition to traditional beliefs uh, poverty and the uh, illiteracy high level of illiteracy people so people don't come forward to hospitals and uh, where we have uh, death at home we don't have means of tracking those deaths as a result so the figure we are having in nigeria is hospital based data which is not reliable in those developed countries like South Africa and developing world, they have means of tracking people. But here we don't have data of number of people, uh, number of uh, birth given daily, number of people that die daily as a result of this. So figure we are having is unreliable. So we should not think it's huru that with Nigeria is not having high figure. And so people should plan that the disease. Disease is ravaging even Nigeria. We, in a few weeks time we are 90 something thousand. Now we are over 126,000 people have been infected. So, I can, because of few number of people that are coming for, if we have high rate of uh, testing, just like in America, where about 500,000 people can be tested in a day, we could have had higher number of people that are infected, higher cases. But because of our low rate of uh, testing, and that's why we're having this low figure, and people may be thinking because, I mean, people may be thinking that disease is not as serious as those countries but they are there is ravaging their communities the ongoing community transmission people are now observing these uh, protocols and guidelines given by the task force on covid 19 so our appeal to people is to take the disease very serious it's still ravaging yes devices are around but it's not yet here and the government only procure about hundred thousand doses where can hundred thousand doses uh, lead us to so we still have long way to go so even if there is vaccine we still must continue this uh, our behavior the uh, non-pharmaceutical measures of preventing COVID-19. Otherwise, you can still be a healthy career where you can still give people. Vaccine can only protect you from developing disease. It cannot stop you from being infected. If not, it cannot stop you from being exposed if you are not wearing face mask. So the best method is this non-pharmaceutical measures. And after all, we don't have enough doses of vaccine to go around. And it will take about 60 to 70 percent of the population to be immunized before we can get a uh, half a head immunity. So, if you don't have a minute, had immunity, the infection will continue ravaging the people, and people will be dying silently because it's only a few people that come for the testing. We now know some people are died of COVID 19 without knowing, mm, without right. data. It's, it's, a, it's a big one, uh, doctor. It is a big one because people are dying daily. We're having deaths recorded, and, and the thing about it is that. We do not know the cause of death because again as the doctor has said people are not coming you know to to report cases uh, and so people are just dying around us and we just sometimes go with the feeling that uh, god give it god take it <laughs> yes so, so doctor even with our beliefs we, we are a religious country that's that's uh, noted uh, and so i would be careless too about our health you know needs and all of that in looking at uh, covid 19. yes it has been there it's not only when covid 19 started i've said it we have very very poor health seeking behavior and in any country that have poor health seeking behavior this kind of scenario you get people always uh, associate illness to certain problem the whether somebody is after him from the village because of the strong belief from social cultural i mean our cultural beliefs um because of poverty again people don't have means of even transporting themselves to hospitals and high level of illiteracy so people don't read they cannot write they don't hear news they don't know what is going on so when these problems are going on people don't take it serious oh uh, they always read many to his oh they are they are making money from it that's why they are championing the cause and that is not the case this thing is real and it's happening all over the world if nigerian government are telling like, are you staying other government of the developing country i mean developed countries are also telling like so the problem is enormous. We continue to appeal to our people to take the COVID-19 very serious. And that is the reality. I must come out with from, from, from this perspective about, you know, the issue of COVID-19. The social media and how much it has helped and, on, and, and again on knowledge of uh, COVID-19, what is happening the world over. And again, how much, again, it has uh, the negativity about, you know, knowing and understanding COVID-19. Because on the social media, we see, we hear doctors coming out, you know, to say that it is not real. In fact, again, 
they will come out to tell us that um, it's, it's just a white man's ploy, you know, to deal, to reduce population. And so Africa has been uh, their concern about where, why they must reduce um, the population in Africa. And, and so this has come out. Again, we hear again that uh, the injection of the vaccine too is all about, you know, getting, um, uh, you know, knowing, you know, getting a DNA and uh, to monitor you and to monitor your movement and who you are and all of that. So these are things coming out of, from the social media. So, and doctors again have come out to tell us that, look, um, you, you do not have to do all what they're saying, that go with this treatment and you will be okay and, you know, stay safe from COVID-19. All of that, the confusion that we're getting here. Yes, uh, you know, in social media, in as much as we have good news coming from that uh, aspect of the media, there are also bad news that are mostly not reliable. So people have to be very careful with what to hear. Anybody can parade him or herself as a doctor on the social media. If any doctor is sure of himself, you should come out using regular media, his detailed address, where he's working. And very, I'm very viable. Even in America, there was a woman claiming that uh, hydroxychloroquine was the right drug to use for the COVID-19. But after some uh, series of uh, events, you, you, she is nowhere to be found. So, which means the claim she was making was not right. Then how can you use 300, uh, use, and according to her, she used 300 people as a case for him to make his claim. Which is not right. We all know the procedure for making, for testing drugs and so on and so forth. From, even from the analysis, you know, say, he, he's, he's, our claim is, was not genuine. So, so many people can go on social media to go and make ungenuine claim. But people should read in between the line and follow proper channel. We have a CDC from America. You can go to their website if you want to verify any information. We have NCDC in Nigeria. You can go to their website to verify any information. So anybody can come on social media. It's unregulated media. So anybody can come there and see whatever I like. But the most reliable one is the one that are coming from proper channel. And people should follow it. Concerning the vaccine, it's normal. Even in all the previous vaccine. Uh, all sort of um, on uh, unconfirmed claim have been made concerning other vaccine. But after some times, all those unconfirmed claim visus out. Just as polio, there are so much of unconfirmed claim at that time. So it is expected. Especially the rush at which this vaccine was produced, it made some people to be suspicious. And but the investigation is still ongoing, the vaccine is still under testing, and many credit people have come forward to to, to receive the vaccine in the public. So Boris Johnson of uh, UK has come forward, the vice president of America has come forward, even the Joe Biden too have received the vaccine. So if the vaccine or what these uh, people are saying are genuine, those people cannot come to the public and receive the vaccine. That is the fact. And if those developed countries want to finish us, we because we rely on everything from those places. They have means of finishing us before today. So all those allegations being made are, 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 are unconfirmed, it's unverifiable, and it's not uh, cogent and uh, non-verifiable uh, 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 claim. So people should disregard it. Yeah, uh, doctor, let's come back home. Yeah, coming back home in, in Kaduna. We, 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 we having, you know, the case of COVID-19 going on the high. Sometimes, again, you know, we have, um, you know, taking uh, uh, the, the graphical thing uh, as it goes, it goes up and down. But Kaduna, too, may be, as, you know, having a case where we're having a worrisome situation in Kaduna. Lagos has, has, has expressed itself by, you know, the numbers that come, you know. But Kaduna, again, taking its toll. What is happening in Kaduna that we, we, we must, you know, we must be careful about and, and really take serious? Yes, uh, Kaduna, I think we are number third in the country after mm. Lagos and FCT. Yes. I think Kaduna is the next, then Plateau. Mm. So, which means, uh, number one, it shows Kaduna is taking the testing very seriously. Because gradually, reluctantly, people are now coming forward. Mm. And the government has even man make it mandatory for all the civil servants to take uh, to go and take the test. Probably that's what puts the figure very high. Otherwise, compared to other northern parts and northern states, I mean, other states in the north, 
They are not as taking it, I mean, they are not taking it as serious as the way Kaduna. And probably that's why we are having a half figure. Of course, when you do more tests, the cases will be fine. It's when people don't do tests, they said they don't have case. So when you, as more and more tests are being done, yes, there will be increases. So nothing to worry about. But what is also telling us is that uh, there are ongoing community transmissions. And people are not adhering strictly to these non-pharmaceutical measures that have been seen all, uh, every week on the radio, on televisions, and so on and so forth. So people who strictly adhere to these non-pharmaceutical measures, wearing a face mask, yes, we start seeing people wearing face mask nowadays. But it's not if you look at most people, they are not proper. It's not being properly wear. Some people put it at jaw, or some people be, put it below the their nose. So and until the nose and mouth is properly covered, before you can say you it is properly wear. Uh, people in the market are getting crowded in the buses and so on and so forth. So people are still not strictly observing this thing. So I think governments will come down with a policy on how to effectively, I mean, uh, monitor people so that uh, people can co I mean cooperate with this. Uh, protocol well, well there seems to be a confusion here if government says that uh, observe all the protocols and then stay safe you also have a situation with just like you said the markets are now open and uh, you know the transportation close. is uh, people are just the, the buses and the you know the, especially evening time or night time when they're not being monitored we, we see rush in you know rush hours and what happens and, and we also see that the state government has also asked uh, tertiary institutions to, you know, to, you know, open up and, and all of that. So, same as we're getting government saying stay safe, but uh, we also have um, the people trying, you know, doing things that will not keep us safe. And, and so, this confusion here. Yes, I, I think people just need to learn that uh, this new behavioral change has come to stay for us to be alive and healthy, and. Uh, we have to find means of going, I mean, go ahead with our activities. Because we can't continue to to shut down everything forever. Because we don't know when this COVID-19 will we, we go, even with the arrival of the vaccine. But what people need to do is to follow these non-pharmaceutical measures very, very strictly for us to be okay. And... Uh, the government too, it's not every time the government has to find means of uh, policing people. We have so many challenges, security challenges, and uh, many other things that government need to use security agencies for. So people who believe their government, take their respon take the responsibility of their head. If everybody takes the rep responsibility for their head, there is a limit. I mean, little effort government have to make to by moving around to police uh, people. You know, we can all remember before we start wearing this face mask, the security agencies have to be moving around the junctions and stopping people before people now start and um, uh, to enforce it before people now start wearing it. But there is a limit to everything. We can be government can not be sending security agent to market schools and everything so there is a leadership in every area at uh, the institution is believed there is a leadership there the market people should have leadership that should be able to constitute a committee to enforce this all these uh, non-pharmaceutical uh, measures i think that's what i can say concerning uh, doctor let's go to lagos uh, lagos uh, the situation there is that um, the hospitals have been overwhelmed and we hear oxygen you, you know the, the, the money to even if you, even if you go out you know you know, people taking advantage of, you know, the situation, uh, and um, it has gone so high. And uh, so when we compare to Kaduna State, let's get to know what is happening in Kaduna State. We, we know that uh, isolation, you know, government has provided, you know, has facilities for people to go in isolation and to be treated. And so are we saying that um, we, government still can take care of uh, COVID, uh, those, those that are infected with this disease? Talk. That's a very serious. <laughs> it's a serious challenge that is that is currently ongoing, and the government is thinking out of the box on how to be able to continue to manage these uh, people that are affected. And uh, as I'm speaking, we are gradually rounding up the procedure to to take on home management. The government has started thinking of home management because the number of cases has becoming overwhelming. 
just one day within this last one week, there was a day that we recorded five foreign infected in Kaduna, which is unprecedented. It has never happened. We used to have less than 100, then gradually 116, 171. Then now, all of a sudden, we have over 500 people that turn positive. So, how many isolation centers do we have in, in Kaduna? I don't think they can be able to take care of 400. So, if you look at all this, and the cases keep on coming every day, every day. There is no day we don't record cases in Kaduna. So, if you continue like that, so the alternative have to be provided. So, we are also thinking of establishing isolation centers in all the local government. Then, in addition to the home management, for those that are asymptomatic or, might, or those that have my symptoms, because it's not every case you can manage at home. And it's not all the houses that will be feasible for home management. Where people live in face me, I face you. They share toilets, share kitchen. Of course, that kind of, that in that kind of house, it will be impossible to manage a case. Otherwise, you infect the old, the old people in the house. So, government are taking responsibility and taking measures on how to cope this thing and to be able to effectively control the the, 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 the spread of disease and at the same time move on with our life. That's what the government is thinking. And that's probably what informed them uh, the opening of the high institution. They are still being cautioned. You know, secondary school and primary school have not been open. Mm. And because of the high rising of the cases, and that's why they are being cautious. We are in the high institution, people are mature there. They are highly educated. They are, and they are still structural leadership there that have system in place that they have enough security that will be able to monitor what is going on in the campuses compared to when you have secondary school and uh, primary school. So that is why they decided to open high institution compared to secondary and primary schools. Uh, just before we, uh, we have to go for a break, but just before that break, uh, Doctor, again, um, the vaccines, are, yes, uh, the, the world is saying that um, vaccines are coming out. And concerns on, on the vaccines have all, also been on um, the, the, the health workers that uh, they should first be exposed to the vaccines because of their, their peculiar situation. And um, again, uh, last administration in the United States of America, that's talking about the Trump administration, had pushed aside science you know, in, in all of this. That, that became an issue in America. Uh, so if we com come back home, health workers or those that are on the front line, uh, the frontline workers, yeah. We, in government hospitals, we still see a situation where, you know, people just walk around and uh, even the protocols that you would talk about, in hospitals, we see that um, this is not enforced or this is not as strong as, as it should be. And we're talking about, you know, health workers who also have family to go to and so expose themselves too. So how safe are we, you know, all of us? Honestly, it's, it's a very pathetic situation. You know, when you are at work you have you are under pressure so many things are ongoing you are seeing patient regularly i we know this thing is not is it is not easy but we keep on campaigning to our people you know we are human beings too we come from from the same society so the same character and uh, these are the people that are supposed to know better so even at the hospitals the enforcement of uh, face marks out is ongoing because in every health facility there's what you call infection prevention and control committee these are the group of people that move around to make sure all the staffs uh, working in health facility um, uh, are observing this protocol so that uh, they won't expose themselves and probably that's why we're having high rate of infection in the health facility because uh, of this uh, uh, times we have shortage of this uh, face mask the government is supposed to regularly providing them. So, at time you have to, and uh, this um, this surgical face mask is not recycled. It, it cannot be recycled, and that's what we use in hospital settings. And they are in, in short supply. And the campaign is that the people in the community should use fabric for their face mask so that the the surgical face mask will not be too expensive. For the government to be able to afford it so that we can adequately be using in the hospital. But when you go into society, you see people, so many people wearing it. And it, you know, it's a issue of demand and supply. The moment the, the demand is more than the supply, the price will go up. And it affects our services in the hospitals. Because if this thing is not available, it will be very difficult for all the health workers 
to be able to regularly wear it. And probably that's what is responsible for those health workers that are not regularly. If they have to be buying every day, so you can imagine what will remain. I mean, will be left. <laughs> Doctor, you, you just gave me you gave me a point so, there, and I'll still hammer on this point. The, the face mask is available. I mean, on the streets we see hockey yes. of, uh, it. But again, I want to talk about you know how safe it is. They say face mask. Do we have? you know, a grade of it that one would say, you know, from, from the medical angle that yes, this is safe. Because we see all sorts of face masks. Now, the thing is that just have one and uh, to use to from the nose down and all of that. So, when you're talking about how safe, you know, this face mask, uh, can we just pick it on the street or pick it anywhere and mm. then it's, it's a face mask. Honestly, we've not been verified those uh, surgical face masks being paraded on the street to checked is the integrity but the one they normally provide us in the hospitals is w uh, what we use for surgery and what we use for treating some of the infectious diseases like tb in the in the hospital so we have and we have categories of it we have n95 which is highly 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 very very effective in preventing disease followed by this surgical face mask that we use in performing surgery the essence of using face mask is to reduce the transmission it's not that it can stop it totally it's to reduce the number of microorganisms that is released to the environment and if you are in a crowd and everybody is wearing it it's safer but if some people are not wearing it and it's only a few people that wear they also have some risk even for those people because they, we know the percentage of risk is less is higher among those that are not wearing but if you have people that are not wearing among your mix even you that you are wearing the risk is still high because you can uh, you can touch the place where the microorganisms have been dropped and use this thing to touch your face or mouth and so on and so forth so the best thing is for everybody to wear if everybody is wearing it it will be able to help us to curtail the spread of disease as much as possible but the and the and that's why we also use i mean say we can also use fabric types it's not that uh, everybody's using surgical though the fabric time may not be able to protect 100 percent protections but at least it over some level of protection and if every especially if everybody's wearing it and that's the essence to reduce the droppage of the dropping of the microorganisms into the environment where you are so if i thought you are carrying the virus is still around you and you are not discharging the virus to environment and that is the essence the program is perspectives and it's a thursday and uh this program is sponsored by the state ministry of health we do this on tuesdays and thursdays and we've been sharing talks with uh dr jimo ibrahim of the barrio teaching hospital on covid 19 the situation in kaduna state and of course talking about it uh, as we have it in the world we'll go for a commercial break be back with you shortly <laughs> Welcome back to uh, the program Perspectives coming to you on Invicta 98.9 and uh, we're talking about COVID-19 as um, it's coming to the world and of course um, coming back to Nigeria and back home here in Kaduna State what we're doing about it D D Dr. Uh, Jimo um, the, the federal government is worried about COVID-19 in Nigeria and that's why it comes out with the situation that we have on ground and of course um, asking or telling Nigerians to take, you know, to take their safety very serious and that's uh, to observe the protocols that are on ground. But again, uh, Kaduna State stands out again too in all of this because we have a governor who is concerned, who's been infected, has come out of it and knows that it is serious. And, and so it, the governor wants his state to be safe, citizens to be safe. A and we have, again, here in Nigeria, states uh, that are not taking it serious you know and um, not worried about it but we have a state too that stands out to say that um it's, it's just all talk and uh, there's nothing like this in the state and even inviting you know states to come and you know um, take a cue from his state now here's a state where we have doctors too we have a commissioner of health too and uh, you'd wonder what they are saying to the to, to the governor uh, so and this is the state of nigeria so what are we getting? This confusion that we're getting that uh, uh, some states uh, there's no COVID-19 in some states and so come and do your business in my state and uh, all of that. Where are you getting out of this? Uh, thank you very much. 
It's a very pathetic situation when you have among governors a governor claiming that uh, he doesn't care about the COVID-19 or all the COVID-19 is not real. But at the same time, you see the governor's forum, the chairman of governor's forum coming forward to tell Nigerians about the reality of COVID-19. So, in a democracy, this kind of things you always see. But what is most important is for people to be able to read between the lines and follow the facts. I've given out different websites for individuals to know where... You know, some people, they don't believe in science. And that's what even play out in America. When the new president said he is going to follow science. But the other president disregards science and uh, the people are showing the exit dot. I think they can show... They can... <laughs> They can use the same method to, to, to determine the fate of uh, other governors that are not protecting their people. And that is my own uh, advice. I want to say the COVID-19 is real. It's all over. It's rampaging all over the world. Nigeria is not in, uh, an island. It has affected us. And uh, it's, uh, there's ongoing community transmissions. And uh, we have, even those states, I mean, we are, they are denied. We have cases of high-profile people died of COVID-19. We have heard of a chief judge in the state ran to Abuja to isolation center in Abuja and was confirmed. He later died and buried in Abuja in uh, follow, following uh, COVID-19 protocol. So, so we can. That's why I say we should be able to read between the lines and follow science. If we're able to follow science, we'll not be misled, and that is the most important thing to say here. Well, again, um, we, we have we were well, high profile. You know, citizens who are said to have been infected with COVID-19 and some have, you know, uh, passed on with that. But we do not, again, record those on the lower rung, uh, you know, yes. uh, and so we, we do not get that. But so, so some people just, in all of this mix, some people are saying that COVID-19 may just be the disease of the, the of senior citizens, so to say, or, or the high profile. And um, trying to get the reality of it, they say, just leave it, it's, it's for the, the, the rich and the upper class yeah this disease for everybody can affect anybody the moment you are susceptible and that's why we normally tell people they are high risk people whether you are rich whether you are poor disease doesn't uh, discriminate if you are exposed you'll be infected if your immune is not strong you can come down heavily with the disease so people that are head early should be very careful if you know you are 60 years and above please if you don't need to go up stay indoor and if you are the, um, if you also have uh, chronic diseases like diabetes, uh, uncontrolled hypertension, heart disease, kidney disease, and so on and so forth. Even the chain people that smokes a lot need to be very careful because their lung parenchyma have been damaged already. Already. So when you are infected with COVID-19, and he has predilection for for respiratory system, and that's where you easily get people that 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 that, that have uh, immune compromised. I mean, they have. Uh, I mean, once their immunization have been compromised, so people have to be very careful. It's not; it's the disease of whether you are young. We are seeing young people die nowadays. People less than forty years. If you are having uh, diseases that are chronic in nature, you can easily be infected and uh, come down heavily with disease. We so people should be very careful. Follow these uh, non-pharmaceutical measures. Uh, maintain social distancing, wearing of face masks, and regular hand washings. And uh, let's maintain our respiratory hygiene. So don't cough openly in, uh, in when you are in a crowd and cover your mouth as much, much as possible. Whether with your elbow, if you don't have uh, tissue paper and so on and so forth. And make sure you dispose the tissue paper safely, even when you are when, when you are using tissue paper. That is the proper way of maintaining respiratory hygiene. Again, in helping on this, uh, doctor, I'm bringing you. You are, you are in a hospital, so so you see this. Uh, people come with all sorts of ailments. Um, you know, it could be headache, it could be, you know, heart disease. It could just be any disease. Can, can we also, in trying to curb or you know, uh, know what is happening, be looking at uh, testing people for COVID-19, even as we, you know, what they have come for is not. Uh, is, can can that help? You know. In, in, Yes, that's what we do a lot because number one, people that are managing they have to protect themselves and uh, the protocol you follow when people are infected is different from those that are not infected because it's not everybody you have to be wearing PPE to, to examine so in fact the first thing when you come to hospital, the moment you know we have 30, 30 signs 
of COVID-19 is to ask you to go and do COVID-19 after which we determine uh, after your studies have been known then we know where to push you so the whether you have to go and sort it, sort yourself out for COVID-19 or to go ahead with the management of the patient so people have to, to we have to protect ourselves so people that are coming there are encouraged to, to go and take the test and the test is easily available in all the uh, general hospitals including Barao Deco teaching hospitals so people coming down early has to go and do the test so that uh, we know their status since the test is free it's not going to hurt anything and within and it's available easily accessible so doing the test we help both the head workers and the patients it, it, again economy um, is, we are not at the best of you know the economy and, and so people do a lot of struggle to stay alive and of course have to put food on the table and we talked about this class uh, that's talking about the long run of the site where of course, we've talked about you know, face me and face you. It, it depends on just how, how much we, we, we can manage. And COVID-19 is real. We're saying it, that people are dying. That um, Your concerns about, you know, highly populated areas or where we say the, 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 the lower class yes. with COVID-19. Yes, it's a serious concern. And that's even where we have high incidence of, I mean, high prevalence of uh, this COVID-19. Because anytime you go to mass, uh, high densely populated area, you see high number of cases uh, going on, especially when you go for contact tracing. So, the, the issue is beyond everybody concerning highly congested house. But uh, what we normally advise those people is to make ventilations easily available in their houses, make their window very big so that uh, whatever whatever infection that is going on can easily be blown out of out of the area and they can we can't ask them to be wearing face mask inside their house 24 because it's not a it's not <laughs> they also not, must have yeah, to take permission yeah. from the landlord anyway <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yes but we appeal to the landlord <laughs> to build standard house especially in this uh, highly congested area mm. so as to reduce because it's not only COVID-19 that is uh, highly highly infectious we are also afraid of meningitis especially during the the and we soon enter the meningitis mm. Uh, mm. zone now when the sun is becoming hot so there are other diseases too that can easily be spread and uh, other respiratory illness tuberculosis can easily be spread that's in that in that kind of environment so it's not only covid 19 and people should take uh, precautionary measures especially when they are building their houses mm. there must be house code in building to follow when you are building the house and those agencies responsible to 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 enforce those uh, housing code should try and do their best so that uh, the new building arising from those highly congested area will be sort of the house that follow this uh, protocol okay so talk to us now we're coming to the audience um talk to us uh, what are your concerns what's happening in your area with covid 19 is reality i uh, know one should try to talk you out of that covid 19 is real and is taking its toll on the population of the world. America recorded over 400,000 deaths. That's over 400,000. And then, of course, uh, we hear what's happening in Great Britain now with the variant of it the, in lockdown and some parts of Europe. Africa is having its uh, own challenges. South Africa is coming out as one country uh, that has been ravaged with COVID-19. So, and back home in Nigeria, on the reporting is an issue for us. And uh, But we know that uh, people are dying. And so what is happening in your area? What are your concerns? And uh, ask the questions that you need to ask the doctor. Call us on these numbers, 81 40989 or 70 Your calls. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Doctor. Good yes. morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning, our presenter. Um, I, I'm Steven, the caller from Ibi Musa Mundi. Really? Yeah. But then in this corona, we will give kudos to the government for sanitizing or telling people the reality about COVID-19. But my sole concern, our own area, let me speak particular in my area where I am living. I don't see people for, uh, taking this proportion very seriously. Most especially this market that uh, 
we are going to. If the people are not law abiding, and I don't see that uh, the government putting enforcement in all those markets and areas. You see how people are loading in a vehicle from Kao to Mwando, from Mwando to Kao. I wonder if we are truly trying to enforce people to comply with this covenant. So I would like government to take it seriously, go in all these areas, marketers, transporters, and others to see if they can control this. If not, sorry, if we continue like that, at least it's a disgrace and a shame to us because government has done them this. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, that's, that's Isaac, right? I see Madu. Okay, I see Madu. Thank you. Uh, doctor, you had it there. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for your very important uh, comments. I really appreciate you. It's a source of concern to us too. Uh, many areas have not been uh, uh, not following this uh, COVID-19 market especially. I think government have to do something. Have to Because we have been seeing it every day. So maybe they have to be sending security agents to the market too as they are sending to the roads to enforce uh, uh, and also to enforce the number of people the buses can carry. It also go a long way and also to make sure all people inside the buses wear their face mask. Very, very important. And I think we started seeing that because there are security agencies along the road that are stopping vehicles to make sure people are wearing these things. And I hope people will keep on doing that. But the number of crowd in the bus is still a source of concern to everybody. And I hope government is listening and they will soon do something about it. Okay, we have another call there. Um, yes. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Morning. Yeah. Good morning to the doctor also. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, sir. Uh, what my own uh, area of concern is that uh, you know, they say this vaccine may not be given to people below so that are uh, certain age. That is only from 40 or uh, 20 or so on. But today, most of these students in the school, it's like the primary school, they are below that age. And if you see the way the children are playing at home, it's even more worse than when they are in the uh, school. So what is the government concerned in opening this school so that I will be able to know? Because even if they stay at home, I don't know whether that person is going to be given to them because it's starting from 05 to 17 or 18. So that's what I want to ask. Is there not any way that the government should consider the open this school? Because most of the schools that is where the one in uh, Panama and Mountain, when I compared two guys that were Kawaka and Bado, I saw that but the teacher was controlling this students very, very well and everybody was wearing with he or her face mask. So what we are feeling is that can the government consider the opening these schools? Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, Sorry, you didn't introduce yourself, um, but I guess. Okay, that, that we could come with Gabriel. Okay, doctor. Uh, so, thank you very much for your concern. Yes, uh, I think government, uh, their committee concerning this uh, opening of the schools, they went around to both secondary and primary school and they see that the level of compliance on, uh, on, on the protocols and the uh, guidelines concerning COVID-19 are not is we still have long way to go and that is why they've not opened primary and secondary school and you know primary and secondary there are so many and uh, the level of compliance the proportion of schools that comply are so minimal and there are rules and regulations that they have been given to follow which they are not yet followed so we are appealing, appealing to all the schools the school authorities to follow this guideline and as soon as they made this uh, guideline, I think the, the, the government will open the school. It, 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 they open tertiary institutions because they've realized all those people are applying to certain significant measures. And that's why they open the tertiary institution. It's not that there's just a uh, blanket or something without. So there are guidelines they put down and committees are moving around to inspect whether all these could have be able to meet those guidelines. Is the institution, they think they've satisfactorily met some level of a guideline do things and that's why the institution as, and as soon and the pressures are ongoing to put pressure on those uh, authority of those schools as soon as they were able to meet those things i know government will know because everybody is tired of children staying at home since more than a year now mm. so it's a concern to government too and i think they are doing something about it 
Stay with your calls. Um, still can take one or two calls before we bring it to a close. Uh, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, sir. Yes, good morning. Hello, good morning to your guest. Mm. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike. Yeah, Mike. From All right, Mike. Uh, please, I want to uh, make my own contribution in respect of uh, commercial vessels. In fact, I think uh, for government to uh, do something to check out all these things, they should equally any boss they found somebody inside without face mask, not only the person should be punished, even the bus driver should also pay the fine. I think this will help me using the menace of people entering buses without taking their profession. Then secondly, this is, I know this is beyond the just uh, power, but I want to suggest, like uh, those of us who are saying that uh, COVID-19 uh, is not raised, we should stop giving any aid to their state. It is not for their respective state to checkmate them, whether they will allow them to be ruling them like those, or they will send them out of their offices. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Uh, Mike, yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you for your comments. It's also a good suggestion, and I agree with you in total. Uh, if you could remember just yesterday, the President Buhari just signed an executive order to make it an offense officially if you are found wanting this or this guideline, and somebody can even be jailed. So it's not a serious issue. It was yesterday that the the the, the President put the signature on the on the guy. I mean on the law concerning the enforcement of these things and i hope people will abide so that we will not be caught napping and that is the essence of this uh so thank you very much you make a genuine and it's, it's just a comment mm. all right um we still can take um one or two calls squeeze it in hello good morning hello, hello. good morning good morning sir good morning doctor good morning uh, this is Mr. Sunday Bende calling from Nagari. Sunday. Okay. I just have a few questions for the doctor. Now, doctor, we, we are need to understand that there are various um, types of the vaccine. Uh, I mean, there are types of the vaccine that is um, being circulated. I mean, worldwide. Now, I don't know which one is it that Nigeria is using. And why is it that Nigeria is going to use the other vaccines? You know, this, uh, this brings a little bit of doubt. Some will say the other vaccine is the best. This one is, is, is having a kind of a challenge. And uh, you, why is it that we have different vaccines for different countries? Why is it not one vaccine? Then secondly, um, COVID, recently we are told that COVID-19 uh, has... Been, now, will the vaccine still work which against these variants of the COVID-19. Now, thirdly, my question is, uh, uh, opening of schools with high population, like uh, especially government schools, where there are high population of students in per class, how does the government intend to go about that? Where there are no enough classes and the student population is high? Please, these are just my few questions. Thank you, I'm well done. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Sunday. Uh, what I want you to know that every country is trying to develop their own vaccine as a means of self-reliance. Even Nigeria, I learned they also they too, they've gone to drawing board. But uh, we have different types of vaccine available, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Oxford, and you can go on and on and on and on. And each vaccines have a level of protection different from each other and then level of storage. I think what we are going for is availability because if you look at those countries where they are produced, some have already procured all what they produce. Of course, I can be we can be producing vaccine in Nigeria, you now go and be selling to Ghana. So it depends on where there's availability of vaccine, and I think that's what informed government decisions on which kind of vaccine to procure, in as much as it provides some level of uh, protection to people. Then concerning the, 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 the yes. The variants keep on coming and uh, lends uh, those vaccines uh, based on the variants available now. Most of those vaccines uh, that have been produced were, 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 were or I mean, those virus who are susceptible to those vaccines, which means those vaccines uh, will be effective and uh, efficacious against this, uh, those vaccines. That's the information we are having. But it has to be globally given. 
that is the problem because we realize most of these vaccines are being procured. In fact, at least is planning to take. Uh, you see, Oxford to 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 call that uh, they were unable to meet their deadline of I mean of giving the number of doses of vaccine they they pay for, and uh, those people those companies were saying. The, the the production of vaccine is not as fast as this so it has to be gradual so all these developed countries that have resources are uh, procure all the vaccines and uh, we are left with nothing and if all the world are not glo globally vaccinated we a variant can be developed that will be resistant to those vaccines that is the implication so what is a global village somebody can move from now to us or to to, to 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 uk within 24 to 48 hours so if he's not regularly vaccinated he can go and reinfect them there with another variant it could be a nigerian variant we already have south africa established south african variants as well as nigerian variant in uk so if we are not globally vaccinated he can breed new variants because vaccines too they are very smart they want to be protected they they just like a human being if something is destroying your house you want to find means of protecting the house so that the destruction will not continue the same thing is happening because the, the same thing is happening to the virus because they are living organisms so that is why it's not good to allow this thing to go on unabated without vaccination i mean vaccinating people globally so that we'll be able to make uh, maintain the herd immunity all over the world so that we'll be able to kick down the the virus as soon as possible well, Dr. Jim O'Brien, I'd like to thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that will just be about the size of it on the program Perspectives this morning. The program sponsored by the Cabinet State Ministry of Health to talk, you know, to talk about COVID-19, the situation globally, and of course, back home in Nigeria and, and with us in, in Cabinet State. I would like Dr. Ibrahim, thank you for coming on the program. And Dashin, thank you for connecting me with the people. We'll come back with Perspectives tomorrow. Good morning.